Welcome to this month's Economic Update. I'm Sinead Rafferty, Portfolio Specialist at MLC, and I'm joined by our Senior Economist, Bob Kinneen. Welcome, Bob. Thanks, Sinead. Bob, it was another strong month for global share markets in November. Uh, what drove markets higher? Well, you saw Wall Street and the Australian share market make record highs, and we've had a couple of positive influences there. Mainly it's on the talk about a trade deal between America and China. So if we go back to October, President Trump announced that they had a phase one agreement with China and markets are optimistic that a trade deal is near, but nothing has actually been signed yet. So it's, it's a bit of a hopeful sign at the moment. We've also had the environment of low interest rates. So you've had American Central Bank and the Reserve Bank here cut interest rates three times this year. And that in particular has boosted share markets. And yet, there's a lot of issues in the global economy that markets could be concerned about but seem to be discounting. Things like Brexit, Trump's impeachment, and the Hong Kong protests. Um, why do you think the market isn't factoring that in? It's conscious of those risks, but it's driven by this optimism about the trade deal and the low interest rate environment. So equities look attractive compared to the very low bond yields and the very low interest rates that we see around the world. So investors are, uh, have got limited choice in terms of the return outlook and they feel the need to be in shares rather than in bonds or cash. Now you mentioned that the Australian share market got to all-time highs. We haven't seen that since before the global financial crisis. Um, up over 3% in November. Which sectors did particularly well? In Australia's case, it was really the information technology that was up about 10% and the healthcare sector was up about 8%. And, but it was a broad rally across the board because we've had this environment with the Reserve Bank cutting interest rates that investors are chasing returns. So what about the data that's come out of Australia in recent weeks, particularly unemployment? Are we starting to see green shoots? or are things continuing as before? I would generally say that the economic data in Australia is very subdued. So if you looked at the jobs data for October, we lost 19,000 jobs, the unemployment rate ticked up. If you look at car sales, they continue to be weak, down about 10% over the past year. Housing construction, so think about new buildings, apartments and the like, down about 24%. The Australian economy in terms of the growth rate for the year to September was only 1.7%. And that's a full percent below our normal growth rate around 2.7%. So generally the data is on the weaker side. Against that, we're seeing those green shoots in terms of the house price story. So with the Reserve Bank cutting interest rates, you've seen a lift between four and 5% in terms of house prices particularly in the Sydney and Melbourne markets. And finally, what about bond yields? We saw them move up in November. Is the market discounting further rate cuts globally? It's quite a mixed picture. So in the case of the United States and Europe, bond markets are telling us that probably enough has been done in terms of interest rates. Whereas in terms of China and Australia in particular, they're starting to discount another interest rate move from those central banks. So they're still positive in terms of their bond markets. Thanks for your time, Bob. Thank you very much, Sinead. And thank you for joining us.